Welcome to this week's Travel Talk Show. This week we are heading to Antarctica. And this is a, a, such an amazing destination and, and you're really gonna see uh, why you should go to the Antarctic. Mm -hmm. I was there last year. It was actually my last trip before all the, the COVID stuff hit. And it was really life-changing. And I do a lot of travel. I, everybody knows I love Africa and I love, you know, travel and with the Women's Travel Club, I'm obviously doing a lot of different destinations. And Antarctic was somewhere that was like, oh, that'd be cool. I'll check it off my list, you know, that seventh continent and all. And I, was so blown away. I was way more impressed with it than I even thought I would be. So I can't wait to show everybody what kind of secrets and fascinating things Antarctic has for you. Uh, today we are joined with Kara and Kara is from Cork Expeditions. They are our partner for the Antarctic and I think they probably do it better than anyone. So I'm going to let Kara take over and introduce everybody to this really, really fascinating destination. Hi Kara. Uh -huh. Hello, Marianne. Thank you so much for having me. It's so delightful to be here and chat about one of my favorite places on the planet, Antarctica. And so before we begin too, I, I've been with the company for almost 13 years. And I've uh, every time you go to the polar regions, it really captures your heart. And as you said, Marianne, it's um, life change, they're life changing experiences. So when you are booking with Women's Travel Club, you're getting partners like myself, and I, I'm with them every step of the way uh, for your trip. And so I've been to Antarctica a couple of times, but also Greenland and uh, Spitsbergen to see the polar bears. So there's so many destinations. And Cork Expeditions does equal polar. So we only do polar travel. Uh, if, um, if you haven't really heard of us before, or you might have heard Quark, uh, we exclusively do polar. So we're not a traditional cruise company that dabbles a little bit in the Arctic and Antarctica. We do polar travel exclusively. And we have been in business for 30 years. Uh, we were the first company to take uh, passengers to the North Pole in 1991, which is still a trip we do today. But we're also the first um, company to bring passengers on a full circumnavigation of Antarctica. So it just kind of another feather in our hat. hat. And uh, also we were the first to take humans to witness a total solar eclipse in Antarctica as well. So these are just some reasons to travel with us. But another really big reason is that we have small little expedition vessels, all under 200 passengers. So I wanted to let you know that through these uh, images that you'll see, we're actually traveling on a small little vessel, uh, all under 200 passengers. So everyone's getting off the ship. So we're merely on the ship to get off the ship in these regions. And so with Antarctica, if you're a traditional cruiser and you love cruising, maybe you've cruised Alaska, uh, cruising the fjords in, uh, in Antarctica is just so beautiful and seeing the colossal glaciers and icebergs, which we'll talk about. Uh, but it's wonderful to have a nice onboard experience as well. So even though Cork is focused on the off-ship experience, uh, we have incredible small Small little expedition ships. So when you are choosing a trip to Antarctica, uh, small ships are great to get everyone off as much as possible. As soon as you're choosing a ship for yourself that's 250, 300, 500 passengers, uh, not everyone's getting off the ship at the same time and getting the same opportunities to get off, off the ship. And before we go to the bottom of the world, uh, there are four types of travelers that come with Cork Expeditions to Antarctica, and you might find yourself in one of these categories, or maybe even all four. And so through our research, we have determined that are generally four types of travelers that come with us to Antarctica. And usually there's the checklister that we all know well. I It was my seventh continent going to Antarctica, uh, so I love that. But also seeing penguins, uh, definitely if you want a checklist, seeing some Antarctic penguins, or going maybe you want to... Um, cross into the Antarctic Circle at 66 degrees south too. But then we also have learners. A big part of the trip with Cork Expeditions is we have biologists, geologists, glaciologists, historians. We even have a penguinologist that comes with us to Antarctica. Uh, and I didn't even know that that was a career when I was in high school. So I would have maybe switched gears, that's for sure. Uh, so the learners are, if you're a learner and you love not only being driven 
uh, by having experiences with like-minded individuals. But generally, these uh, types of travelers like yourselves who are a learner really like the intimacy of a small little expedition ship in the heart of nature. And nature brings us to our escapists that travel with us. So you might be a type of person that wants to get away from it all and unplug and get further and farther um, in disconnect into these beautiful regions of, of nature. And those are the types of people that come with us as well, as well as the adventurer. Uh, people who are really looking for uh, a lot of activity on a trip. Uh, we have things like kayaking and uh, stand-up paddle boarding that I'll mention later on. So if you're someone that does want to have a great uh, vacation, but have a lot of stories to tell when you come back, uh, we do love adventurers with us. I do feel, though, that the adventurous spirit are those that are on these little expedition ships merely cruising around and being in the zodiacs in these areas as well. That's definitely an adventurer. We, our average age is 50, though, and our minimum age is eight years old. So it is still great for intergenerational family travel. Maybe you want to go with your kids or your niece or nephew. Uh, and so this is great for intergenerational family travel. And these trips, uh, even though it's Quark Expeditions and the word expeditions is there, it's not as um, active as people would like, you know, they're, it's the, for every activity level. It can be as active or as leisure as you'd like your, your voyage to be. Uh, so let's dive into going to one of the most remote places on the planet, Antarctica. And so I love maps. So I will have a few maps throughout. Uh, we have trips as little as eight days to go to Antarctica all the way up to 20 and 23 days. And then we also have new Patagonia voyages as well to explore Patagonia. So just depending on how long you're wanting to go for, we have a little something for, for everyone. So one of the most remote places on the planet, Antarctica, is the southernmost con uh, continent. And I love some fun facts. It is the fifth largest continent. So it's 14 million square kilometers. It's twice the size of Australia, and uh, it's 98% covered by ice. And what's neat about Antarctica, and I needed to wrap my... Oh. <laughs> oh, I think we lost Kara for a second. Um, hopefully she comes back. I wonder if she had an internet connection issue quite, or she's just yeah, frozen yeah. <laughs> quite a pose look at the pose yeah <laughs> oh, she, <Kara>. she's nuts. <laughs> okay so just a bit about us in general um while we're waiting for Kara to to kind of get back so uh we are the women's travel club and we do small uh group tours oh i'm back okay she must be signing back yeah. in um, hopefully everybody can still see me. Uh, we do have the chat open. So if you're on there, if you just want to drop a note in the chat, just to let me know that you can still see me or still see something. I, I um, can see you. Okay, perfect. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Amy. Um, so uh, we do small group tours for women all over the world. Uh, we like to have very um, experience inclusive tours. So, you know, tours where you, it's not just kind of scratching the surface. We want to go a little bit more in depth, a little bit more into the tours. Oh, and Kara's yeah. back. Hi, Kara. Hi, my, apo my apology. <laughs> That's okay. I was just in the depths of, um, of Antarctica there. My apologies. <laughs> no, um, it's I hope everyone funny. was meditating on Antarctica oh. and that it's ice surrounded by water and a landmass. Um, sorry about that. No problem. Um, I'm gonna make you the host again so you can share. Okay, your marvelous. Screen. Yes, because we are going there in their summer, and I think that's a really big um, preconceived notion: is why would I want to go to Antarctica? It's so cold there, uh, but we are going in their Antarctic summer. And so there is no bad time to go um, to Antarctica. Uh, so let me just see here. I just want to make sure that I'm sharing properly. There we go. Okay. So in this time frame, it just depends on what you want to see and do. And so with um, Women's Travel Club, they're actually doing an incredible group in March. And March is a great time to not only see the juvenile penguins, um, but also 
seeing whales. It's a great time to see whales like humpbacks and orca whales, minke whales, uh, and then uh, lots of different lazy seals. And uh, it's a great time too to hike. So if you love walking, March is a great time um, and the end of February to go to Antarctica uh, because of the, the longer walks and, and hikes because the snow starts to melt because of their full summer. Uh, but if you like the snow, fresh fallen snow, November, December is a great time to go for that. Uh, and then in November and December is when the chicks are, the, aren't out yet. So it's a lot of the adults, they're making their nests. And then the chicks start to hatch at the end of December and early January. So it just depends uh, what you want to see and do when you're going to Antarctica. Let me see here. So not only people go to Antarctica because it is their seventh continent, potentially, um, adding the continent to your list, but also, um, oh. 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 Down again. and I am back again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like we've lost Kara again. Um, so yes, definitely um, from my trip. So I can talk about my trip to Antarctica and um, the cruise ship was excellent. It was a smaller ship and it's an icebreaker ship. And so those two things really give you the ability to get in closer to um, to the land and closer into a lot of the fjords. Um, so you get to see more and you get to experience more. If you are on a large cruise ship, it, it doesn't it either, A, can't get in as close. And so you don't get as many shore landings um, or the same types of excursions, but also uh, it, if it's not an icebreaker, um, it, it can't get in uh, and as far down south. So you're not getting quite the same experience. So if you're looking at a cruise ship tour to Antarctica, say you're like looking at Celebrity or one of the higher end cruises that go to Antarctica, they're not doing this Antarctic experience, the same expedition experience where you truly go into the heart of Antarctica. Oh, I think we've got Kara back. She's back, there she's back, yes. yes. You'd think you'd think I was doing this in Antarctica. I'm actually surprised. I am in the fjords in Antarctica. I am I am the escapist right now, and uh, I am not in North America. Surprise! Don't get the hang of this. You can do it. And so, oh my goodness. Um, and so with. Antarctica. Um, we're going to the peninsula and the main draw of the peninsula is because a lot of the concentration of wildlife is there. So we're going to this finger of land um, that sticks up to South America and there's over 20 million penguins in Antarctica and a lot of the wildlife is in this is in this area in the peninsula. So that's why you'll see a lot of operators traveling to this region. Uh, but there is the Drake Passage. You may have heard of the Drake Passage, a big body of water between South America and Antarctica. And it is known as the rite of passage to cross um, to get to Antarctica. It takes about a day and a half uh, to uh, eat in each direction. So we're starting our trips. A lot of them start from um, Argentina, from Ushuaia, the southern tip. And so it's called a convergence crossing the Drake Passage. And so it's a lot of bodies of water coming together. But I had an experience where it was the Drake Lake, we like to call it. So it was quite smooth. But then you can experience the Drake Shake sometimes. But <laughs> wonderful, wonderful experiences. Maybe seeing the albatross, a lot of seabirds. Uh, so we encourage everyone to get out on deck. And so there's lots of great um, educational components and programs throughout the, this portion of the journey as well. Uh, I saw my first iceberg, so it was really incredible, like approaching Antarctica and getting out on deck and seeing a first iceberg. So this is a great um, sailing, but uh, we do fly the Drake as well. So that shorter itinerary of eight days, um, we do have a program where you can fly for only a three hour flight as well. So just depending if you're short on time and big on adventure or don't want to sail the Drake, there's lots of options for you to get to Antarctica. 
So what can we see and do in Antarctica? There is a silence in Antarctica that is deafening. I, Marianne, I'm sure you just, it, you just have a moment of thinking, oh my gosh, there's just, it's so beautiful. And then all of a sudden you might hear the crackle of an iceberg, a snap, crackle, and pop, like a bowl of Rice Krispies from an iceberg, or maybe you'll hear calving of the glaciers or the penguins cooing. Uh, and with Antarctica, with cork expeditions, people are actually getting off the ship as much as possible. So guests, we're trying to get off at least twice a day. We try and aim for two excursions. So maybe you'll have breakfast in the morning, get out for an excursion in the morning, and then come back and have lunch and then go out again in the afternoon. And so we're actually standing foot on the continent and we're able to walk around. So the, 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 these excursions are included. And the penguins are definitely the stars of the show. There's the little Adelis or the Gentoos or the string, Prince chin strap penguins. So you're actually able to walk amongst the penguins. And on one occasion, I was in front of a glacier and I just was looking at this beautiful glacier across the, the little bay that I was in. And I had my feet shoulder width apart and the penguins are so inquisitive. They'll, they're not scared um, well, they're and they're not very curious. Yeah. And so walked right in between my legs and kind of looked up at me and then kept going. So they're just such moments of intimacy in the penguin rookeries where the penguins live and even the penguin highways. So there's penguin highways and you'll see the penguins going in and out of the water. So uh, no bad time to see uh, penguins in Antarctica. Uh, I did see whales in February one year that I went. Uh, I saw two humpback whales, a mother and her calf. And in true expedition style, expedition really just means anything can happen, packing your sense of adventure. Because one morning we were supposed to go out on the landing, but we ended up being in the Zodiacs and doing a Zodiac cruise because two humpback whales approached us, this mother and, its, and her calf, and it was coming right underneath our Zodiac. And it was an incredible experience. So we were with these incredible creatures for about two and a half hours mm -hmm. rather than going on a landing. So expedition really does mean just, you know, anything can happen. Uh, it's really, we don't stick to a, a time for an onboard program. We are at the mercy of the weather and, the na and nature and the wildlife, which is exciting. This is an example, too, of the orca whales. So um, seeing orcas from the comfort of the zodiacs. And so these are the zodiacs, the little rubber boats that we do use. So they're great, stirrable, safe uh, little rubber boats. And these are what we travel in to get on landings. They're like a little taxi, as you will, to get you off the ship and even uh, seeing and exploring these areas. Uh, but one particular excursion this wasn't on my trip but we do have a video of orcas going after a penguin and the penguin jumped in the zodiac to get safety I saw that video. Sa saving the penguin um so everyone in the in the zodiac was like oh my gosh what do we do and of course all of our engines they're turned off so we're not scaring any of the wildlife and the penguin was like hello I'll just stay here for a bit um so there's you never know what you're gonna what's gonna happen on an adventure to Antarctica I never got sick of the ice, though. The glaciers were so stunning, so beautiful, just an incredible uh, presence of the ice. And again, that snap, crackle, and pop of the ice formations. And our glaciologist was incredible on, on one of my trips and, and really explaining um, how much life lives on the bottom of the icebergs and, and the ice, and the sea ice. And it's wonderful because this is the this is the bottom of the food chain for all life in the oceans uh so it's really neat to not only hear about how ice is formed and the difference between sea ice and sea ber uh, icebergs but i loved learning about um the uh, life that happens and all of like the seals and the and the whales collecting so much of, of the food in antarctica from the ice and so there are the lazy seals. So there are the top predator, the a leopard seal. There's the Waddell seals, um, as well as uh, a lot of other species. And so this is just an incredible, another form of wildlife that we can see uh, maneuvering around, around the ice in Antarctica. So the peninsula, this is one of our most popular trips. This is a lot of for first timers, if you're thinking of going to um, Antarctica, the Antarctic Explorer trip. And this is the departure that women's travel group still has a couple of cabins on. It's almost, they're almost sold out, but highly recommend reaching out because it's fun to travel with some like-minded individuals on your, on your voyage. So it's from March 6th to um, March 16th of 2022. So please inquire. 
But if that date doesn't work for you, maybe you've already booked a trip. There's lots of other dates uh, this upcoming Antarctic season or even in 2022 and 23. So definitely reach out. Uh, but this 11 and 12 day trip is a great place to start. But we also have that fly cruise departure. So if you did want to fly, we have um, eight day trips starting from Punta Arenas, Chile. So we'll pick you up from day one in Punta Arenas fly across the Drake Passage, and then the ship is waiting with no one on it. So we greet all of you um, on the ship in Antarctica and then have a full Antarctic trip and fly back. If you do want more time in the peninsula, though, we do have longer trips to explore the peninsula. We have 14 day trips going right into the heart of the Antarctic Circle. Uh, and then we also have the fly cruise option for this as well. So flying over the Drake Passage, but crossing into the Antarctic Circle. So it just depends what you're looking for uh, in your voyage to Antarctica. I can't talk about Antarctica without talking about the sub-Antarctic regions, uh, the Falklands and South Georgia. So these are beautiful sub-Antarctic islands in uh that are in the sub-Antarctic region of the Southern Ocean. And so the Falkland Islands in South Georgia are home to not only glaciers and fjords and other wildlife that you won't see in Antarctica, uh, it's great for history as well. And so it is home to uh, Shackleton's grave, Sir Ernest Shackleton's grave, uh, but it's also home to gorgeous um, albatross colonies. So albatross are seabirds, they spend most of their life at sea, but they come on land to nest. So it's uh, Falkland Islands are home to the uh, world's southernmost um, bl um, black-browed albatross uh, colony. And it is possible to see the albatross again crossing the Drake Passage. They're usually using the draft of the ship and going counterclockwise. Uh, but it's neat to see nesting uh, uh, species in, in Falklands as well as South Georgia as well. So if you are a birder, uh, and you're thinking of going to Antarctica, uh, you might want to look into the itineraries that have South Georgia and, uh, and Falkland Islands on them as well. And this is gorgeous. This is not your ordinary beach. If you like your beach vacations, uh, this is a stunning cove, Gypsy Cove in uh, the Falklands. And so just beautiful. And it's so lush there. And so it's co coming more north to the equator. So it, it's not as cold as Antarctica. Uh, when I was in Antarctica, in different months, it ranged from minus five up to plus 10 even with the days that there was sunshine and, and no wind. And so it can get quite warm in the heart of the summer in Antarctica. Uh, but, you know, there can be winds, strong winds and, and bustering colder weather. Uh, so there are times where it was minus uh, five to minus seven. But going up a bit further, further north to these islands, it's so lush and green because it is closer to the equator and uh, the, the, the weather is very different. Uh, there are different species that you won't see in Antarctica most likely. Uh, sometimes there might be a straggler, one or two that could potentially be seen on the sea ice or something like that. But here's a, the rockhopper penguins and these are so fun with the funky hairdo. So uh, this is their, the, their home is the Falkland Islands and, and uh, other sub-Antarctic islands. And so there are 17 species of penguins in the world. So it just depends on the different types of penguin species that you'll, you'll wanna see. But uh, South George is home to over 200,000 king penguins. So the king penguin is the second largest penguin species. And if you can see in this little picture, some of the brown ones, and the brown ones are actually the juvenile king penguins. And uh, so they're the teenagers and naturalists actually thought the juveniles were a different, completely different penguin species until they actually started studying them more and realized that they were actually the juveniles and these chicks were just malting their feathers. So a lot of different things that you can see in South Georgia uh, and the Falklands on your way to Antarctica. It does lead for a longer trip. So these trips are 16 days. Uh, so some start even in Buenos Aires, depending if you want a charter flight from Buenos Aires all the way down to uh, Ushuaia and back. Uh, so these are 16 day trips. Uh, still get, getting on board in Ushuaia, Argentina. But then we have the 20 day voyages that include the Falkland Islands, South Georgia, on your way to Antarctica. And if you want the whole kit and caboodle, thank goodness I'm not in our marketing department because they named it the Epic Antarctica trip, uh, which includes not only the Falkland Islands in Antarctica, but crossing into the Antarctic Circle as well. So it's a 23 day trip. Um, there are people who have done the Antarctic Explorer and then two or three years later come back 
and decide to do uh, a trip that includes the Falklands or South Georgia with Antarctica again, because there are no two trips that are alike, that is for sure. So if you have the time, think about uh, going uh, on a longer trip. Uh, I traveled with uh, someone who was 99 on one of our trips and he loved walking around doing the contemplative walks. Uh, and I was also on the a ship with an 86 year old who didn't get off the vessel once. So again, these trips are for all different types of, of ages and, and activity levels um, and leisure travelers as well as, as active travelers. Some new itineraries though, which are very exciting for next year are some of that include Patagonia. And we do have a new ship that I'll mention with two helicopters that heli flight sightings included. And so Patagonia is gorgeous for um, fjords and wildlife, rainforests and rugged sho shorelines. So it's filled with abundant wildlife. And so there's sea lions and other seabirds that can be seen. And it's also home to the Terra del Fuego archipelago and also the Cape Horn biosphere. So with these trips, we're actually able to land in Cape Horn. Um, and so it's three of the world's largest bodies of water, the Atlantic, Pacific, and the Southern Oceans collide in Cape Horn. So this is really famous in the sailing communities and the expedition world and the explorers, that pe people that have come before us. So it's an incredible um, reserve that encompasses a lot of national parks. So something else to see and do. So we do have Patagonia voyages for 13 days. So if you wanted to see Antarctica and then tack on Patagonia, we have a great trip that includes that. So it uh, combines that Antarctic explorer popular itinerary with seeing um, Diego Ramirez and, and Cape Horn. So this is a great option. And then also an essential Patagonia trip. So maybe you don't wanna quite go to Antarctica yet, or maybe you've been to Antarctica and you're going to maybe Easter Island in, in uh, Torre del Pane or Easter Island. Um, there's a great uh, options to just do Patagonia with Cork as well. Cork Expeditions is really known for our off-ship experience. Uh, we specialize in getting everyone off the ship and deeper into the regions than anyone else. Again, you can get off as much as you'd like uh, or stay on the board. I was on my first trip to Antarctica with my 66-year-old aunt. We uh, did an amazing uh, excursion in the morning together. And then in the afternoon, she wanted to stay on board. So again, it, it you can stay on board if you'd like. Uh, enjoy the spa or the amenities on board. But we, we are known for getting off the ship as much as possible. So a lot is included, like our photography pro programs, if you're an avid photographer. We also have the heli flight sites included on our new ship, the Ultramarine. Zodiac cruising is included with your trip, hiking, uh, so a lot is included, and that infamous polar plunge. Marianne, did you do the polar plunge on your Antarctic trip? There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you, no, I, I didn't, and I, you know, I'm a sock, so I, I, and I don't, like, we have a pool, and my husband's, like, knows I won't go in it unless it's, like, heat's been on for days and it's like edging up to 90 degrees I'm like a hot tub lover so I was like I don't know about this but so many people did almost everybody on our boat did the plunge and it was so great watching them including we had a 90 year old um, woman on our trip ah. and she did the polar plunge See, it's for all ages I love yeah. that that is so great <laughs> And you have just as much fun watching everyone else do it, even if you don't participate. Because I, I, you know, there were times where I didn't either, and I just had so much fun watching everyone squeal and get out and get warm. And <laughs> well, I have to say, they all looked like this girl jumping in, and their faces vastly changed just as they walked. <laughs> I should be doing before and after pictures. That's right. <laughs> You've never seen people scramble out of the water so fast. <laughs> And so with that, you know, varying for different itineraries and different ships offer additional adventure options. So if you do want to add something to your trip, um, inquire about our paddling programs uh, or our um, camping or heli landings, stand-up paddle boarding. One of our stand-up paddle boarding guides actually comes from Tofino on the west portion of British Columbia. And he said, he told me that 70% of the guests that stand-up paddle board with him in Antarctica have never stand-up paddle boarded before. 
Never. Mm -hmm. They choose Antarctica with cork expeditions to stand a paddleboard. So they're very durable and sturdy. So these are just some additional adventure options that people can do if you wanted more than what's included with the uh, regular itineraries. And honestly, what's included with the program is more than enough. There are a lot of times where I did the included program and I was exhausted by 9, 9.30. I think I was in bed with a cup of tea in my journal um, to get up for an early morning Zodiac cruise the next day. So there's so much packed um, in, in, a, in a regular schedule, but there are additional adventure options. And what's great too is if you are traveling with a group or other family members or friends and someone wants to do an adventure option, it's nice to split up for a morning or an afternoon and then come back and have dinner and share these experiences that you had on your excursion and uh, and come back and, and share those what you've seen and, and done. So uh, it's nice to even uh, have that option with uh, with an expedition ship. And we do have the most experienced team in the polar industry. Uh, after 30 years of polar adventure, our guides have endless passion and unparalleled knowledge in these regions. And I loved it that our, our expedition team also sit with you during dinners and lunches. And, and I think this is a really big uh, comment that I get a lot um, from people who come back to Antarctica. It's on our comment card where the, the expedition teams have, have really made the difference. And I really do believe it's not only where we are, but it's who we're traveling with that it makes a, a trip very special. Uh, we also, so it's one expedition team member to, to seven passengers, so seven guests, making it for a very hands-on experience. But then also we have a great Cork Academy program as well. So we're, even if uh, one of our expedition team members may have, travel with another company in different seasons, we have a great uh, expedition team and a program that we train all of our expedition team members on. And so we do know the importance of choosing the right vessel for each type of expedition and, and your personality might fit a different type of, of ship for your expedition too. So we have a 28 passenger vessel, the little expedition ship called the Ocean Adventure. So she does both polar regions. She had a multi-million dollar renovation in her in 2017. I love this little expedition ship. Great for little, small little porthole cabins too. Great price range. Uh, but our newest addition to our fleet is our ultramarine. We just completed sea trials with her in Croatia. She's fully built and and uh, and looks beautiful. This is the ship that's purpose built uh, with the two helicopters. So she's our our first um, designed specifically polar exploration ship, and she means beyond the sea. So in Latin, ultramarine means beyond the sea, and so she is our first purpose built ship that we own, and it's just such a great uh, ship. And with this expedition vessel we can get everyone off the ship even faster with four zodiac disembarkation points uh, so depending on weather too we can use different zodiac uh, disembarkation points and if you know if you're worried about getting in and out of the zodiac even with this platform you can get right in and out our expedition team members are there helping everyone get in and out of the zodiacs uh, so it's a it's a really great uh, expedition vessel for making the off ship experience even more comfortable and this ship has all outside cabins, even solo cabins, uh, great bistro and lounge. But then we also have our world explorer in Antarctica. So all balcony, all sweet ship. So just depending on your level of luxury. And then we have the Ocean Diamond. So this is the vessel that um, Women's Travel Club has their group on in March of 2022. So a great little expedition vessel, 189 passengers. So she is a favorite a vessel among our staff and past passengers alike. And so she's got a very friendly onboard community with lecture rooms. And also it's neat because like-minded explorers can gather um, your thoughts and, and share your stories in great uh, observation lounges and libraries and, and, and bars. So this is a great little expedition vessel, one of the fastest ships in Antarctica as well. So uh, she's a great little, little ship. Uh, so please uh, let us know if you want more information about uh, the ocean. Uh, Diamond and the Women's Travel Club group in March of 2022. I did want to mention a little bit our sustainability. Uh, in the spring of 2019, Cork Expeditions actually uh, created a bigger strategy under the banner of the, our Polar Promise. And so we not only want to reduce our footprint and build resilience in these areas, which we have reduced our carbon emissions uh, and we've eliminated single-use plastics and things like that, 
but we also created a polar ambassador program. So if you go and visit Antarctica with us, uh, you can come back uh, being a polar ambassador because it's ultimately about preserving the polar regions uh, for, the, for the next generation of, of polar travelers. And that is our polar promise. We are a leader in industry health and safety as well. And so uh, even prior to the pandemic, uh, health and safety have been our number one priorities for cork expeditions. And we were actually sailing up until March 2020, uh, when everything was uh, unfolding so quickly. So we had been COVID fee, fee on board. And so we got everyone home safely. Uh, but the challenges prompted by COVID-19 have reinforced our commitment to safety. So with our upcoming Antarctic season and, and beyond, we have assembled a multifunctional task force of physicians and polar experts and industry leaders uh, for a really comprehensive health and safety plan in the expedition industry. So that you do have peace of mind when you're thinking of traveling to Antarctica with cork expeditions or exploring the polar regions uh, and, when you're, and when you're actually wanting to book. So we have created uh, four pillars of health and safety, but we all came, all, all also came out with the safe uh, COVID policy. So if you are booking our up and coming season, uh, we do have a uh, great uh, up time, uh, cancellation for any reason up until right up until boarding. If you cancel for a COVID reason, we'll rebook your trip. Uh, if we cancel due to COVID, people can even get refunds. Uh, we also do rapid testing on board. So four days into a trip, we'll do rapid testing. Uh, and we're really our four pillars of health and safety are for healthy fellow passengers, uh, clean expedition ships, healthy staff, and healthy expedition environment. And what's really great is the, by nature being in Antarctica, you are free from crowds. So we're going to the heart of nature. Think of being in a zodiac and the polar air going through your hair is just, it's very much free from crowds. There are, we're not visiting communities in Antarctica. There are no communities in Antarctica. So it's a great thing to put on your list and move it up your bucket list if you're thinking of, of traveling in the near future. Also, you get a $250 per person onboard credit um, when you are booking through a women's travel club because they are a preferred partner of ours and we belong to a wonderful organization together. So uh, this is a great opportunity to get uh, bonuses when you're booking through them. So again, we have uh, the Antarctic Explorer. This is an 11 day trip as the group departure with uh, women's travel club for 11 days, March 6th to March 16th in 2022. And there's also great pre and post in South America. And I was just saying to Marianne earlier too, and Irene, like, you don't want to go home after you go to Antarctica. You want to go what's next. So it's great to have a, a more trips around your Antarctica voyage, uh, because uh, the adventure doesn't end uh, in Antarctica. If you want to explore South America, there's great things to see in, Antar in uh, South America as well. So I thank you so much for having me today. Oh. And uh, I, I just, I love talking about Antarctica and Falklands and South Georgia. Uh, and so I'm really excited about your group coming up next year. And uh, we're thrilled to, to, have, uh, to have all of you on board. So are there any questions? I, you might have them on the weekend or next month when you're like, oh, what was that question? I was th still thinking about that. I know we had... So you can definitely type. Oh, oh, someone. Okay, uh, let's have a look. It's in fact the hand is up for a while. Oh, oh ah. put their hand down. sometimes it's by accident. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah, so you have a couple options if you do have a question. There is a Q and A button at the bottom of your screen. If you click on the Q and A, you can type a question in, and then we'll read it out and answer it. Also, if you uh, would like to come on and say hi and chat um, and actually speak, we'll open your microphone. So if you raise your hand, there's a little button to raise your hand, raise your hand, and uh, we will open your microphone and you can come on and say hi to Kara yeah. and say hi to us and, and ask any questions actually, you I may have. I have to say, Kara, when I saw that one image with all those penguins on the beach and all those wonderful jackets in front, it was photoshopped. It really looked photoshopped. <laughs> yeah. It was oh, yeah. that good. Yeah. Surely the penguins are like that. You have to, you'll be going somewhere and they'll be like, okay, this you got to step over this penguin. So someone actually stands there and make sure everybody steps over the penguin because they, they yeah. just don't move. Yeah, it's, like, it's yeah. so true. Hi. It's so true. <laughs> and um, and you were talking about two are in those yellow parkas and 
there yeah. had been a question too about you know are those included and marianne and i were talking about how we use ours for our oh, yeah. um, winters in in canada yeah. um you know walking the dogs and shoveling the driveways or the sidewalks so um it is yours to keep so every passenger gets uh, not only a parka but also really great muck boots so they've got great tread on them so two less things that you need to pack when you're thinking of going to antarctica right and the boots are funny they look like rubber boots but they're they're, they're kind of lined they're the most comfortable boots that look like just big rubber boots so they're waterproof and everything um but yeah they're they're great and the parka has an inside part and an outside so it's a two-part parka um and when it's zipped all together it's like one big thick parka but the inside is just like a a nice um kind of poofy jacket you know mm -hmm. those poofy jackets that you get now it's like a poofy jacket um and it's black and it's quite nice so the parkas but, are great and the boots um, and is there any other equipment that people would have access to for any reason yeah, that's a great question. Um, walking poles. So we'll supply, we'll take out walking poles on every landing. Uh, so if people feel more comfortable with one or two walking poles, there's walking poles of every size. Uh, we have a quite a range. So um, happy to provide those. Uh, but one thing that I really recommend is waterproof pants. So either a rain pant or a ski pant for getting in and out of the Zodiacs with wet landings, um, or even just for the Zodiac cruising, sometimes I had water splash up on me. So highly recommend that. And I recommend two pairs of gloves too for equipment. Uh, I had was holding onto the Zodiac and got one of my gloves wet and it did take a bit of time me drying it um, in my cabin. So I always like having a, an extra pair of gloves and, and some thin gloves as well, because it's nice too, to sometimes it is chilly when you're using your camera. Um, so it's nice to have a thin pair of gloves for taking your hands out of your big gloves, but able to use your, your camera. Now, oh, is this another question? Actually, I still have another question myself. You never <laughs> discussed the, the food. Um, ah. But that's important so yes it is very important and you know we're so focused on the off ship experience or i am that i forget to talk about the cuisine so i'm so glad you mentioned that because it's an expedition it doesn't mean that we need to sacrifice our taste buds and our food i personally believe it's incredible uh, we have breakfast lunches and dinners we have snacks around the clock um, even if you're, if you're an early morning riser, we even have the pastry chef make pastries at six, six 30 in the morning. If you want to grab a coffee and go in the lounge, if you're not, uh, if you're up before breakfast, uh, that's great. Um, you know, uh, Marianne can talk about the food as well, but I even got used to like cheese plates and like, I was like, I got home and I thought, where's my cheese plate for dinner before my main course. Uh, and I loved it too, because some, one day there was a, a there's vegetarian, vegan options, dairy-free, gluten-free. Uh, we have a lot of dietary requirements that can be uh, uh, catered to as well. But I love the fact that I was sitting there and it was an a, it's a la carte. And I thought, oh, I wanted a little bit of the fish, but I also wanted a little bit of the steak. And so the chef prepared a little bit of both. So the food is just exquisite. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I have to say a, a couple things with that. One is it's just like any other cruise. There's endless food. You will have food, food, food. Um, beer and wine is included with your dinner. That's correct, Marianne. Yeah, great um, point. Yeah, so that's that's nice too. You don't have to worry about bar bill or anything at the end if you'd like a glass of wine with dinner. No problem. Um, and they take such good care of you. I was, they had... I think it was on a cheese plate and they had those like digestive cookies and I hadn't had them in forever. So I ate the cookie and the next night I asked um, our waiter, I'm like, oh, those digestive cookie things that you had last night, they were so good. He brought me out a package of them. I'm like here, take them back to your cabin. I'm like they're so, they take such good care of you. It really, really is nice. Oh, good. Um, Melissa's got her hand up. So let's uh, open up Melissa. Um, actually, you might have to do it, Kara, because I think you're oh. the host on this. So, um, I think you just have to click oh, on her um, let you open her microphone. Um, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop share and make you the host again. Oh. So, that, um, <laughs> so that you can, uh, you know, let's see here. There is another question while you're figuring that out, guys. So, um, the use of cell phones that, uh, 
Are they, do they work on the ship? Is there a way to access a phone? Oh, that's a great, um, that's a great um, question. So through the Beagle Channel, when you're sailing through the Beagle Channel, um, when you're embarking in Ushuaia, your cell phone will work. It might be quite expensive. So I, I recommend um, getting a, a SIM card or what have you. So it will, it will work through the Beagle Channel. Um, but as soon as you start getting about six hours into the Drake Passage, you probably won't get communications anymore on your cell phone. Um, with that being said, um, we do have Wi-Fi on board for an additional cost. And uh, so you can log into Wi-Fi on your devices uh, for that. Uh, what is neat though, is there is two platforms. Sometimes WhatsApp works on Wi-Fi. Sometimes I'm not guaranteeing anything that sometimes I've known for a couple of WhatsApp messages to come through and I'm thinking, oh, this is neat. Um, when you're, and then also there's a great, um, on board, we have the daily programs online. So it's really neat if you do bring your device, a, an iPad or an, a, a smartphone, uh, that you can bring up like the daily programs and, and see what's going on or lecture notes from the great presentations. Um, so it still is great to be able to log in for those types of things too. Good, thank you. Okay, uh, Melissa, I am going to open your... Hello. Hi, Melissa. Hi, how are you? Hey, how y'all doing? Um, <laughs> And actually, you guys just answered everything that I was going to ask about the cell phones and the food. So thank you very much. I really <laughs> That's amazing. It. And that was a great Most presentation, Kara. Part. Oh, thanks, Melissa. That's great. Excellent. Thanks so much. Thank you. Kara, if you can just repeat, somebody's asking about the 14-day tour, what the name of it is. It's One called Crossing the Circle. There we go. Yeah, crossing the circle. So it's called crossing the circle because the first part of it, we really go right to um, 66 degrees south and cross the Antarctic Circle. And then we start making our way back up the peninsula. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I think that's it, Marianne, for questions. Okay. Well, I have to thank everybody. Um, thank everybody for joining us. Thank you, Kara, so much for this great presentation. Um, it was so nice to revisit Antarctica. I, it was one of my best trips. And I, uh, truly, if, you, if somebody's thinking about doing it, you should do it. it. It's, I, you know, you wouldn't realize how beautiful shades of gray and blue can be, but it truly is. And it truly is like nowhere else in the world. So um, if you're, if you're thinking about it, really do give it a thought and have a look. I mean, if you have any questions about Antarctica and you want to give us a call and, you know, I can chat with you from having been there, even if it's not this, uh, our tour, if it's just another tour, just a general question, just let us know. Um, we're uh, happy to answer any yeah. questions you might have. Deborah, just a great presentation. A thank you to you both. That's, that's great news. And I think Marianne is about to Go to her kitchen for a cookie or maybe a digestive and a cup of tea. <laughs> Probably. And me too. Me too. <laughs> and thank you to Debbie and Irene for um, being here and kind of in the background, manning all the, the chat and anything that we need in the background. Um, so next week, we do our travel talk every week. Um, so every Wednesday at three o'clock, we have a different travel talk, uh, traveling all over the world, which is pretty great since, you know, we all really aren't traveling right now. So it's kind of fun to, to visit different destinations and learn about different places. So next week, we're heading to Botswana. So Ooh. anybody that might be interested in now, you know, going from the Antarctic, we're going to head to Africa yeah, and to Botswana, the capital, the elephant capital of the world. So uh, hopefully you'll join us for next week. And uh, that is it. Thank okay. you. Great meeting you, everyone. Right, thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks for having thank me. Thank you so much, Karen. Bye. Be well. Take care. You too.